Chris Petty. And this is the Petty Test. Hey everybody, what's going on? And welcome back to yet another installment. Hopefully you've been enjoying the series. This is my first guest to my show. This is Zach Baird from Corn. Hey, hey, how's it going? Pretty good. Nice to meet you again. Nice to meet you again too. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I play keyboards with the band Corn and wanted to come and check out Dubspot. I wanted to ask Chris if he could help me design a sound that's similar to something I use with Corn. I've got to do a tour coming up with just a couple controllers and a laptop. There's a song called Falling Away From Me where the, the band takes a break. We pause for a couple of beats while I'm actually sliding the entire range of the French connection. It's all on you then. All the way up the octave to, you know, I'm going from the very low range all the way up to the high range of the keyboard. But it's also glide. gotta not be sliding around necessarily when I'm playing the half steps of the actual song. Like when I'm when I would do what I would call the chunking of corn. It's just the dum 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 It needs to have short attack, be fat, a control that's mapped to the slider so that it gives me this be able to control the glide. amount of time for yeah. it. Sure. Yeah. Zach hasn't seen Silent before, and I was just kind of showing it to him when he got here. Silent, I actually mentioned during the first video that I shot, and it's still one of my absolute favorite DST audio unit plugins. I think that it sounds phenomenal. I pulled up Silent, and what I did is I right clicked on the menu to initialize the patch because it's usually where I start with it. And if I strike the key, I'm gonna do it at A, and I'm gonna pitch it down an octave. So we hear a very deep saw wave. A lot of harder styles are usually played with power chords, and the power chord is the root and the fifth of the chord. So if I'm talking about A and what the notes are, it would be A and E. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna engage the second oscillator on silent, and I'm also gonna set that to a saw wave as well. And what I'm gonna do with this is I'm simply going to take the note and I'm going to set it to plus seven. Sounds like the fifth to you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I think it's just so low right there. So let's actually take this one, set it an octave. There you go. And let's take the re-trigger off of this. I'm also gonna add a third oscillator into the mixture also because what I wanna do is I wanna do the octave higher for the root. And let's set this to one note. So that's what a power chord essentially would sound like right. on a synthesizer. I don't know how much you want to mimic the guitar with all of this, but we know that when the guitar gets struck with the pick, the same kind of thing happens as when a drum head gets hit, that there's a slight little pitch attack mm -hmm. on it. It's almost inaudible to the ear, but it produces just a little bit of an attack with the whole thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my first envelope here, my mod envelope, and I'm gonna assign it to pitch A and B, that is for part A and part B inside Silent. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the decay amount, and I'm gonna set it just a little bit higher, and I'm gonna put a little bit of pitch. So let's doctor this up a little bit more with some distortion. So let's actually monkey around with the sound just a little bit more. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run part B through a bi uh, bandpass filter, set it to 12 decibel, and I'm gonna turn the drive up on it also. And I'm gonna go to part A, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assign it to a low pass filter at 24, and I'm gonna turn the drive up on this also. I've got the warm drive enabled on silent. Finally, what I want to do is I want to put some compression on this just to even out the volume level. So I'm going to go and turn the compressor on and I'm going to set my ratio to a two to one kind of scheme here. 
and let's turn my release time up all the way so that it holds on to it and doesn't let go of it. And let's EQ the sound just a little bit also. Let's put a little bit more bass into the whole thing. What you had said you wanted to do was you wanted to be able to control the portamento time right. so that you could control how fast or how slow it glides up. So this is actually very easy to do. Like I was telling Zach, one of my favorite things to do with any of the instruments that I use inside Live is pack them into instrument rack folders. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this instance of Silent and I'm going to say group or use the command G key to do this. So when it does this, it actually packs it inside an instrument rack. And now what I need to do is I need to make assignments for what controls are actually going to be controlled by the macro. The trick is, is that I have to hit this triangle on silent and then hit the configure button. When it does this, it's going to bring up the plugin interface. And then I can simply go and touch upon anything in the interface. So when I do this, if you take a look at what's going on in the background, it's made assignments for what the controls are from the plugin that I would want to control inside live. And so are these multiple assignments that are controlled to one macro? I could do as many oh, to really? a single macro as I want, sure. You have to hit the configure button here. Okay. You expose the triangle and then you hit the configure button and then anything you touch in the interface becomes available to assign to macros or to draw an automation on the uh, line. One of the very cool things about it is, is that we can set different scaling ranges with it also so that we don't have to, you know, shoot in the dark and hope that we get the exact value with this. We can doctor okay. it so that it's absolutely going to be perfect with this. So I'm going to take the configure off now and very simply what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the portamento time here and I'm going to say map to macro one. And okay. now the portamento is What you might not have caught with this, because I did it so quickly, is, is that up here at the top I have a scale range, so I can basically set the range that I want the particular controller to go to. Like for instance, I'm going to do this with the uh, with the filter cutoff, just so that you'll be able to make parts brighter and make parts darker as well. So if I say map to macro two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to map this one to macro two. I'm sorry, I'm going to map this one to another knob. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it so that the range doesn't go all the way down to the bottom. Let's actually adjust that to make it a little bit darker. Really cool. I haven't used the instrument rack to, to I mean, essentially, to me, it's like wrapping the plug in yeah. inside of an Ableton. I'm going to go here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an EQ8 into the mixture of things. So I'm going to drop it here right after Silent. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this first frequency band here, and I'm going to right click on this, and I'm going to say Map to Macro 3. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a boost on it, and I'm going to scale the range here also with this. So I'm going to go here to my frequency and I'm going to make it so that there, it's somewhere here in the mid-range, like around 500 or 400. Actually, let's make it a little bit higher. Let's make it 900. So now, when I take this knob here, which I'm going to assign to a physical control as well, because it's always more fun to have hands-on stuff to touch. So we can 
can actually have dozens of things automated at the same time. We can right click on anything and we can say map to the same macro. When I hit the chain button over here, there's three buttons on the instrument rack. The first one shows the macros, the bottom one shows and hides the devices that are inside it, and the third one shows the chain. Basically, I can have up to 128 different chains inside it. I'm actually just going to take another instance of silent and drop it in and then choose a completely different sound just so that we okay. can hear exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to go and pull up some sort of pad sound from the preset list. Let's go here to... Uh, okay, so if I strike, I'm going to hear both of them at the same time. It's a combi, basically. Like I said, everything in the interface is mappable. So if I want to go here, I can basically right click on this and say map to macro 8, and then right click on this one and say map to macro 8, and then go to the MIDI map mode and invert the actual positions for them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this one down to 0. If I strike, this should switch up between the two. Okay, so it's 0 and 127, so we're going to set one of them to 127 and one of them to 0. Now, what's even cooler about this is that I can utilize the MIDI effect plugins that are inside Live also. So let's say I want my pad to be an octave higher than where mm -hmm. it is. Take the pitch device and drop it only onto that one chain. So when it's on that chain, then I can go and transpose it to a completely different octave range. Wow. these mappings here. I'm going to go to these guys here and I'm going to say unmap from speaker right. on, unmap from speaker on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm just going to do a regular MIDI map with this. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say assign this to pad one and go here and assign this to this pad. And now what's going on is, is that these buttons will basically turn them on and off. Oh, okay. So that's how I would do it. switch up the sounds. Yeah. The instruments. In answer to your question about how to set this up to basically switch through the dial, we have a thing inside Live called the Chain Selector. And what the Chain Selector does is it shows us all the different parts that are going on inside here. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to take the range of this and move it over. Let me move this over just one note here like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this. This is the Chain Selector. And the Chain Selector basically will cycle through whatever different patches or sounds I have loaded in. I can set the range far apart, or I can set it you know, as wide as I want. So I'm going to keep it at one value here. So it's going to be a range of 0 to 1 on this. So if I go here and I say map to macro 4, and what I'm going to do then is pull up the MIDI map mode, and my chain selector is right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this between 0 and 1, simply because we only have two values, two different parts. 0 is counted as 1. So now, if I was to do this, this and then let's take this one and move it over even one more like this and then let's set the range to 2 and then what we'll do is go here and choose a different sound for this particular pad so let's hide the chain selector and let's take a look at the instrument and let's just you know let's just pull up a different pad sound from here so let's choose a sunrise so now I have access to all three and I can basically just use a knob to cycle through the different okay. sounds and there you go, you have access to three incredible sounds. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's dope.
It's very cool. This has really been an unexpected surprise, and uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this as much as I have, and uh, thanks for watching. Every sound can be found. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.